Hey, thank you very much to Grace, Ryan and Connor for sending me in that jingle to use. I can honestly say I've heard nothing else like it in my life. Before we move on to recurrence relations, you may notice that this page is slightly different. I've decided to split up the topics a little bit more. The feedback I'm getting from these videos is that people quite like how the course is split up into manageable bite-sized chunks. So by doing this, I thought it may help to find videos and so on when it comes to a revision. But moving on to the next lesson, looking at something known as recurrence relations. It's only four lessons long. It is quite short and there's obviously the review at the end. But this should be quite a quick uh, chapter. To start it, I want to think back to something that you've all heard of before, and it's sequences. Now, if I asked any of you in the class to give me a sequence, uh, Connor, could you give us a sequence? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Brilliant. Thank you, Connor. Yes, that would be a sequence. We start with two and we just add on two. If I asked somebody else for a sequence, Andrew, could you give us a sequence? Seven, eighty-one. Brilliant. You start with one and you're multiplying by three every time. It's just a list of numbers in a definite order. Or as it says here, a sequence is a succession of numbers called terms that follow a rule. Now a sequence, it can be infinite, which means it goes on and on forever, just like senior prize giving. Or it could tend towards a limit. For example, if you start with 16 and then you half it, you get 8. If you half that, you get 4. If you keep halving it, you're going to get closer and closer and closer towards 0. What I want to think then is, a way back in first year and second year, you probably heard the story about the wee bloke who owns a cafe. He's got one table, so he can fit four happy, smiley people around that table. Or if he had two tables joined together, he can fit six people around them. Or if he had three tables joined together, then he can fit uh, eight people around them. And you had a table looking something like this. It said if there was one table, two, three, four, five, six, then you had to fill out the number of people. And that was dead easy to work out. And then what it gave you was a number on the end. I'm just going to call it N for number. And you had to work out what this number was. And to do that, you had to think, because I'm going up in twos, I would times by two. So you would times number in the top by two. So for example, five, five times two gives us 10. But how do you get to 12? Well, then you would add two. So take the number at the top, times it by two, and then add two. And it worked for every single number. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to think about this sequence in terms of terms. So I'm going to have the first term, then the second term, then the third term. So that is the pattern there. And I'm going to call the first term u1, then the next term u2, and the next term u3, and so on, all the way up to u6. And then this next one I'm just going to call un. So that's going to be the nth term. So you could come up with a formula for the nth term in terms, in terms of n. And by doing that, and to do that, what you think is, well, I'm going up in 2, so I multiply by 2. Then I would have to add 2, so you come up with that formula. So un would be 2n plus 2. Now this part here is going to be new with u1, u2, u3, u4. So that is the first thing I want to give you a note on. So we can define a sequence according to the terms u1, u2, u3, u4 and so on, all the way up to un. You could even go past that uh, for un plus 1 and the term before that would be un minus 1. So the first term is u1, second term is u2, third term is u3 and so on, it keeps going. And then the nth term, like the, u, the seventh term will be u7 or the... 14th term will be u14. The term before that, before un, is u minus 1, and the term after un is u plus 1. Some of you probably wondering, why are you using u? Well, you can use any letter you want, but a lot of the time when you're dealing with sequences, the letter u is used. Okay. Let's do one example with this. So the formula for the nth term of a sequence is given by un equals 4n minus 5. So find u1, u2, u3 and u4. 
So what you want to think is, right, well, let's go through it in order. So u1 is going to be equal to, well, I'm replacing n with 1. So over here on the right-hand side of this formula, replace n with 1. So it's 4 times 1, take away 5, which is obviously 4, take away 5, which is negative 1. To work out u2, well, I'm replacing n with 2. So it's 4 times 2, take away 5. And you would end up with 3. I could do the same thing for u3 by replacing n with 3. So 4 times 3, take away 5. And I could do the same thing with u4. Replace n with 4. These numbers that you get on the end then, negative 1, 3, 7, 11, these are going to be the terms in the sequence. So that's the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. If I asked you to work out u5, again, you could replace n with 5, but there's some of you probably screaming at your screen just now saying, wait, there's another way of doing it. You're just going up in fours. And you're right, there is a different way. If you know the term before, you can easily work out what the next term is. It's the same with the wee bloke in his cafe and the tables. You can easily just add on two here. So there's two ways to define a sequence. And those two ways. The first one is by using a formula for the nth term in terms of n, just the way we did there, un equals 2n plus 2. Or if you know the previous term, you can easily work out the next term. So as it says here, um, by expressing how each term of the sequence relates to the previous term. And if you do that, it is known as a, drum roll, it's a recurrence relation. For a recurrence relation, what you need to know though, is you need to know the first term. And the first term is either given by u0 or u1. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use, uh, you're going to be told that anyway. You'll be told starting with u0 or starting with u1. So, let's take that sequence. We've got negative 1, 3, 7, 11, and you can see that each term can be found by adding 4 to the previous term. So what you could do is you could write, well, u1, the first term, is negative 1. The next term then, u2, would have u1 plus 4, which is obviously 3. To work out u3, the third term, well, you take the previous term and you add 4. It tells you here, you just add 4 to the previous term. So u3 will be u2, add 4, which is 7. To work out u4, again, you take the previous term, which is u3, and then you add 4. So that will be 7, add 4, which gives you 11. Really then, your sequence, what you're getting is you're getting the next term to be the previous term, add 4. And remember with un and un plus 1, un plus 1 is the next term, and that is the term that you've got just now. Or that's the next one, that's the previous one, and then you add 4. Really, your recurrence relation then, or in general, a recurrence relation is always going to be of the form un plus 1 equals a un plus b. So sometimes what you'll have to do is take the previous term and then multiply it by something, and then you add or subtract something. So a and b are just going to be numbers. Something like that is known as a linear recurrence relation. Um, and it's a linear one because it's in the form of a straight line, the y equals mx plus c. So example two. These are the sort of questions that you would get. So examples two, three, and four, this is the sort of thing you have to answer, okay? This is the start of recurrence relations. So we've got un plus one equals five un minus two. Find u three when u zero equals one. So to do that, well, we're told u zero equals one. So we know this first term is going to be one. After that, we want to work out the next term, which will be u one. And it tells you here to work out the next term, you do five times the previous term, take away two. So that's going to be five times u zero, take away two. Because you know u zero, because we know that's one, we can replace it. So it's five times one, take away two, which gives us three. After that, we want the next term. So we want u two, and u two will be five times the previous term, take away two. So that'll be five times well, the term before u2 was u1, so it's 5 times u1, take away 2, which you can then work out. So that's 5 times 3, take away 2, uh, which is obviously 15, take 2, which is 13. After that, for u3, again, 
For the U3, you do five times the previous term, take away two, so it's five times U2, take two. So it's five times U2 is 13, so it's five times 13, take away two, which will then give you 63 in the end. We're asked for U3, it's find U3, so we can then say, therefore, U3 would equal 63, and that's your answer. Let's try another couple of examples similar to that. So with this one, example three, for the recurrence relation, un plus one equals negative two un plus three. Find u4 when u1 equals five. So again, as I said, sometimes you'll be given u0, sometimes it's u1, it doesn't really matter. You just find the next term, so after u1 will be u2, and you would just use your recurrence relation to find that. So similar method. We're told to start with u1 equals 5, so the term after that is obviously u2. And to get that, just look at your recurrence relation. We do negative 2 times the previous term, add 3. So we do negative 2 times u1, add 3. Because we know what u1 is, we can replace that with 5, so it's negative 2 times 5, add 3. And then just go on to work that out, so we get a negative 7. To work out the next term after u2, we've got u3. So that's going to be negative 2 times the previous term. So that's negative 2 times u2, add 3. And we know u2 worked out to be negative 7. So we can then go on and work that out. Just remember, when you multiply negative by negative, it becomes positive. After that, we can work out u4. So u4 is going to be negative 2 times the previous term, add 3, which is going to be negative 2 multiplied by 17, add 3. If you multiply that, you get negative 34, you then add 3, get negative 31, so u4 would be negative 31. Let's try one last example of that then. So example number 4. Given the recurrence relation un plus 1 equals 0 0.5 un minus 1, and u0 equals 62, find the smallest value of n such that un is less than 10. So we want to keep on going and find the first term, the second term, and so on, until we get some number that's less than 10. So to do that, start off with what we're given. We're given u0 equals 62. So to work out the next term, use the recurrence relation. So un plus 1, the next term, is going to be 0 0.5 times the previous term, take away 1. So after u0, we've got u1. So u1 would equal 0 0.5 times u0, take away 1, which is 0 0.5 times 62, take away 1, which is going to be 31 minus 1, which is 30. After that, well, 30 is not less than 10, so we need to keep on going. So after u1, we've got u2. So to work out u2, we do 0 0.5 times u1, take away 1. Sub in the values, so u1 is 30, so it's 0 0.5 times 30, take away 1, which works out to be 15 minus 1, which is 14. After that, for u3, we'd have to keep on going because it's not less than 10, so u3 would be 0 0.5 times the previous term, u2, and then take away 1, which is going to be 0 0.5 times 14, take away 1, which works out to be 7 minus 1, which is 6. From that then, well, u3 would be 6, and it's less than 10. It's the first term that is less than 10. So we can say that u3 is less than 10. Therefore, the smallest value of n is going to be 3. Okay, if you went on to work at u4, obviously it would still would be smaller than 10, but the value of n would be more than that. We want the smallest value of n. So the smallest value of n would be 3 to give us something less than 10. Give these questions a shot then. In the workbook in Heinemann Higher, page 73, exercise 5D, work through these. Check that you're especially okay with examples 2, 3, and 4. These are the first ones in the recurrence relations that you have to answer. The first example was just really bringing in that idea of the nth term. Try these. Any problems, let me know. But good luck.